What's up everybody? Welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. Thanks for joining us here today. It's excellent to have you here as always. And you can see I'm wearing my FUD camo today because, well, it's the middle of deer season. I'm trying not to get shot right now. And after the aptitude that I've witnessed this past week, this is an absolute necessity. <laughs> so last week I did a video that uh, was basically ripping on red dot sights on pistols and the internet lost its mind, which was pretty much expected but there was one point in that video that I wanted to expand on that I think a lot of people were missing what I was saying. And that is that a red dot sight basically eliminates your ability to shoot at any kind of distance with your pistol. Eventually, you reach a point where that dot disappears and you can no longer sight. If your idea of hitting something at distance is to pick a point above the target and sight the gun there, that is wrong. That is super irresponsible. And if anybody is out there teaching that sort of thing, it's not okay. And people are like, no, that's not true. It's exactly the opposite. And I'm like, eh, hold on there, sir. I think that you are misinformed about what you can do and what you can't do. So first off, red dot sights on pistols are almost always used for fast acquisition, fast follow-up shots at relatively close distance. When we're talking about shooting at distance, we have two choices on how we're gonna do that. We can either elevate the front sight or de-elevate the rear sight. And what that whole purpose is, is to increase the angle of attack of the bore. So we can either increase the front sight or we can decrease the rear sight. When we elevate the front sight after a certain amount of distance, we start to occlude the target. And Regardless of what we're doing, there are four rules of firearm safety, only four rules, and they govern everything. One, treat all guns as though they're loaded all the time. Two, keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on target and you've made the decision to shoot. Three, never let your muzzle cover anything that you are not willing to destroy. And number four, know your target, its foreground and its background. And we say them that way and specifically that way because they cover everything that you could possibly want to do. So going back to elevating the sight in such a way that it occludes the target, we cannot pick a point over the target and shoot that to hit that target because we have occluded the target with our sights. We no longer have the information about that target. We do not know its foreground and background because all of this is in our sight picture. That cannot be done because it is breaking rule four. And the reason that I think that this is important is if we talk about this in terms of what kind of situation could we possibly be in where we have to use a pistol to engage something at that kind of distance. Well, the other day I was at the mall and I took my laser rangefinder with me, and the longest shot that I've got in my mall is about 300 yards. It's a tiny mall, I understand. You know, yours is probably much bigger. I think that that kind of distance is absolutely ridiculous for pistol shooting, but say something pops off in your mall, I would think, I would hope at least, that I would have the wherewithal to return fire to either retreat or return fire to advance. Realistically speaking, what's probably going to happen is they're probably going to end up hiding behind the fountain, pissing or pooping my pants. We can all hope. Can't wait that we'd have what it takes to be able to do that. If I am in that situation, I cannot pick a point above the target and shoot at it with a whole bunch of non-coms running around. I no longer have the target information that I need to be able to shoot. I don't know the foreground of the target. I might know the background of the target, but I definitely don't know the foreground of the target because it's occluded. If Karen or Kyle or Billy or Sally runs across and catches one of those HSTs that you just sent, that's a big problem. You own all those bullets, both from a legal perspective as well as uh, from just a not being a piece of shit perspective. In my mind, elevating the site to shoot at a distance is not okay. I think instead, to be able to make accurate hits on target, we have to de-elevate the rear sight to increase the angle of attack on the barrel and maintain all the target information uh, while we're doing that. Now, I've got us back here at 100 yards. It's definitely not 300 yards, but 
Uh, I think it's a workable distance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how this technique works, but before we do that, we're gonna hear from our sponsor. And since this is a continuation of the last video I did, we're gonna go ahead and keep the sponsor the same, Safe Life Defense. If you guys haven't heard of Safe Life Defense, I'm not entirely sure which rock you've been living under, but for anybody who doesn't know, we've featured multiple of their products here on the channel before, namely their flexible rifle armor system. and their tactical belts. I'll have links to those videos in the description box down below. But Safe Life Defense is a provider of high quality armor solutions for everyone. So you don't have to be a super high speed guy with red dots and crap all over their pistols to have access to high quality equipment. They offer both hard and soft armor solutions as well as a variety of other out of the box solutions for different product lines. Now. Safe Life runs a lot of sales, so I'm sure that you guys will see them all over the place. But if you guys are interested, VSO has a code for their subscribers. I'll have it listed in the description box down below to get you guys an extra 10% off of any of your purchase over at Safe Life Defense. And if you use my affiliate link, also listed in the description box down below, then a kickback comes back to the VSO Gun Channel, and it helps to support our day-to-day -day activities here. I greatly appreciate you guys who use those codes religiously. And again, it's a product that I personally stand behind. Not literally. Like, that's a really bad thing to do on the internet. So thanks for tuning into that, guys. We have to keep uh, the bills paid here on the channel somehow. And we greatly appreciate Safe Life for giving us this opportunity to, uh, one, promote an excellent product line, as well as, you know, earn a little cheddar on the side. So in the interest of science, I'm going to go ahead and lean on the top here to take as much human element out of it as I can, make it as repeatable as I can, because any small errors that I induce in the process are gonna definitely make themselves apparent down there. So we're gonna start off aiming true, just as like I would if the target was 10 feet in front of me, and we'll see where they go. So we're shooting 115 grain ball. Okay, so what we see is at this distance, we are sometimes hitting the target because the rounds are hitting low enough to skip off of the range top and bounce up and hit the target. So what I'm gonna do now is perform the standard parlor trick for the range, which is to hold over the target and give you guys an idea of what the sight picture looks like for making hits at that distance, making true hits, not just range top bounces. Okay, now what that sight picture looked like was the sights completely covered the target. I was basically aiming at the superstructure to be able to get those hits at this distance out of this particular gun. Let's see how many I got here. No, nope, empty. Probably one left in the gun. So instead of occluding the target this time by elevating the front sight, I'm instead going to de-elevate the rear sight, changing the angle of attack of the barrel and then, of course, increasing that arc so that the bullet hits the target without actually occluding the target. Normal, like I would if it was 10 feet in front of me, and then I'm gonna de-elevate that sight, and we should be ready to go. That was probably due to the fact that I didn't tap and rack when I put the new magazine in. And again, I'll have a quick sight picture for you guys so you guys can see what this looks like. Doing that at this range without occluding the target, so I have all the target information remaining while still putting accurate hits on target. So in closing guys, what I wanna say is yes, on the range, sometimes we will hold over 
for the purposes of being able to hit a target, whether it, we're playing a game or whatever it is, uh, that is something that we do in the range. And especially when we're shooting at distance. This is the same principle that we use at distance, but we always have a reference point on our magnified optic to be able to shoot those kinds of distances. We have to maintain the same principles of reference points on our sights for our pistols. And I want you to think of it like this, that a range is just like a laboratory. It's a sterile environment. If I walked in and I took a 500 mil Erlenmeyer full of pyridine and smashed it on the floor, we would evacuate the building. If I spilled the same amount of pyridine in a laminar flow hood, I'd probably just go get some paper towels because everybody around us is protected. Likewise, a range is a sterile environment. We have a safe direction of fire. There shouldn't be anything going on out there. We can experiment. As long as we stay inside the bounds of the sterile environment, which are the berms, we can do things that we can't do in real life. However, and this is gonna make me vom a little bit, but it's the whole train like you fight thing. If we're talking about shooting at distance with a pistol, and we have to have reference points. And the bottom line is, if you're using an RDS on your pistol, prove me wrong, at a certain point, if you're using that technique that I just described, that dot is gonna disappear off that screen and you're not gonna be able to sight the pistol with a reference point, and that is just simply not okay. So I had some internet twig gatherers that wanted to see my splits and accuracy. I, I don't know what for. Some business to do with a shot timer so uh, anyway I don't know if that's fast or not I, I I don't know I know that it's about the speed that you need to go to not outrun a Nielsen device could have probably shot a little bit faster yeah I don't know if that's good or not again it's kind of like how much do you bench press and I'm like, ah, I don't know. I know that my last set of bench is 315 times five. How much can I one rep max? I, I have no clue, man. Don't give a crap about that kind of egotistical stuff. It's just not something that I do. Of course, I can't really see either. So, uh, yeah. That one looks like a, is maybe a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit better. Cover it with thickness of a finger. Would an RDS improve that? I mean, maybe, marginally. I don't know. I know that I can outrun a Nielsen device, though, so it's fast enough for me. I mean, obviously, faster is always better, but... I'm a continuous improvement type person, so, I mean, yeah. It's probably like mediocre performance. I don't know. Hey guys, so as a classically trained scientist, it is my nature to challenge everything. It doesn't matter how siloed or accepted that thing is. When somebody gives me a factoid or, or there, I hear a statement, my nature is to be like, is that logical? And then... Mm, where are the holes in that? I suggest that you guys do the same. Don't just accept what people are feeding to you uh, or emulate things that you just see on the internet or elsewhere. Uh, go out and do it for yourself, see what works for you.